Hi, welcome to the Battery Shop. Today it's all about parasitic draw. Here we're going to talk about how an excessive parasitic draw can run down your battery way faster than expected. We'll take a look at how to test for this parasitic draw and what steps to take to cure the problem. When testing for parasitic draw, you'll need something to measure voltage and amperage. And we'll be using this equipment to do the basic test. A parasitic draw is an unwanted draw of electricity from your car's battery. And if not corrected, this can cause your battery to go dead. As an example, if you leave your headlights on, your battery will go dead in a few hours. Also, if your key fob is too close to the car, let's say your car is in the garage, the key fob is on the other side of the wall in the kitchen, this will keep turning the computers on in the car and the battery will go dead overnight as well. So a parasitic draw can be a real nuisance, but fortunately it's not too hard to find the cause of a parasitic draw. So first, let's determine if you have a parasitic draw. All cars draw a certain amount of energy from the battery, even when it's not running. Things like clocks and computers have to have current flowing to them all the time. So it's normal to have a small amount of current flowing from the battery to your vehicle at all times. There are specifications for this, and you really need to look at a service manual for your vehicle to find out what that current typically should be. Uh, a normal amount of parasitic draw for newer cars is between 50 milliamps to 85 milliamps, but it could be much higher depending on how the vehicle is equipped. An older vehicle may be somewhere between 25 and 40 milliampers. The first thing you want to do in a parasitic draw test is to be sure everything is turned off and nothing is plugged in like a cell phone charger, for example. Be sure all of the interior lights are off, and even the light under the hood would have to be turned off. You could do that by taking out the bulb. Once you determine that everything is turned off as far as you can tell, the next step is to be sure that the ignition is turned off and the key fob is far away from the vehicle. Then, let the vehicle sit for at least 15 to 45 minutes, or however long the service manual recommends, and this will allow time for all the modules to enter sleep mode. The next step is to connect an inductive clamp, usually called an amp clamp, onto one of the battery cables. The amp clamp can be connected to either of the battery cables, but in this case, the negative cable is easier to clamp around. And this will measure the draw from the battery, and it should be below the specifications for the vehicle. One method for finding which circuit the parasitic draw is in is to pull the vehicle's fuses one at a time until the amperage drops below the specifications for that vehicle. Pulling the fuses on modern vehicles, however, will cause various modules or computers to wake up, and this will cause a false reading on your meter. Instead, we'll measure a voltage drop across the fuses until we find one that says other than zero. The circuits that are not drawing current will measure a zero voltage drop across the fuse. Circuits that are drawing current will measure a voltage drop across the fuse, and the higher the current draw, the higher that number will be. Check the owner's manual or the service manual for the location of the fuse panels. Typical locations of fuse panels are under the hood, under the dashboard, and behind the glove compartment. After we locate the fuse that has the voltage drop across it, pull that fuse and the reading on the amp meter should drop down to specification. The next step is to follow the wiring diagram in your service manual for that circuit to determine which of the components or wiring connections in that circuit are causing the problem. Once the problem has been resolved, reinstall the fuse into the fuse panel and check to be sure that there is no longer a voltage drop across the fuse.